welcome to my video on thorny dragons and the formation of their spikes. So to start, we will be going over this hypothetical developmental network, which leads to the formation of spikes in certain cells of the skin of the thorny dragon. So before we go into the certain strains that will or won't produce spikes, we have to understand how to interpret this network. So to start, the green arrow means to promote, the red symbol means to inhibit, and the blue spikes represent the formation of spikes on the thorny dragon. The first strain I will go into is the wild type strain. And wild type means that there's no mutation stemming from the original developmental network. So S is able to promote P, which then goes on to block I. But because I is blocked, then I can't block K, which allows K to promote E. And if E is promoted, then it will lead to the formation of spikes. So wild type works. Now we examine our second strain in which P is mutated and not functioning. If P is mutated, then P can't possibly inhibit I, so nothing can inhibit I. Therefore, I is free to inhibit K, and since K is inhibited, then K can't promote E, which means that spikes will not be promoted, so the P mutation does not form spikes. For our third strain, in which I is mutated and not functioning, we will go through the pathway to see if this checks out. So, S promotes P, which goes to inhibit I. However, I is mutated, so it can't go on to inhibit K. And if K isn't inhibited, then K will promote E, which goes on to promote the formation of spikes. So the I mutation does work to form spikes. Now we go into double mutations. This specific case deals with what will happen if I and E are mutated. So S promotes P, which goes on to inhibit I. However, I is mutated, so it can't go on to inhibit K. Like last time, K isn't inhibited, so it goes on to promote E. The problem here, though, is that E is mutated. Because E is mutated, it can't get promoted by K, and it is unable to promote the formation of spikes. So to reiterate, this mutation involving I and P does not work to form spikes. And finally, we examine our last strain, in which we will determine if a mutation to S and K will work out. So S is mutated, which means it is unable to promote P. If P isn't promoted, then there is nothing to inhibit I. So I goes on to inhibit K. However, K is a mutation, so it can't be inhibited, but it also can't go on to promote E. And if E isn't promoted, then there's no way for the formation of spikes, which goes to show that a mutation involving S and K does not work to form spikes. Now, a regulation that could explain why not all cells in the skin have spikes, even though they have the exact same genome sequences, is related to the environment that the thorny dragon is found in. In this hypothetical situation, the thorny dragons have developed the spikes over time as a survival mechanism in order to appear scarier and have a defense mechanism for their predators. In this diagram I made, the thorny dragon on top has spikes on the outside, which is visible to the predator and scares it away, while the thorny dragon on the bottom has spikes not visible to the predator, making for a tasty snack. So even with the exact same genome sequences, the thorny dragons adapted to their environment with the ones that have spikes on the outside of their body surviving, and the ones having spikes on the underside not being so lucky. Here are the references I used.